Amid the growing number of young people leaving the church and their faith, it is easy to lose sight of the millions of young people in whom the faith is taking root. This episode of Catholic Extension is about who these young people are, what keeps them close to the church and their Catholic faith. In this program, you'll experience how Catholic Extension walks with young people in their journeys of faith, including stories of transformation among the poor in California's Coachella Valley, ministries of and for young people in rural Montana, becoming the here and now of the church for the young people of El Paso, Texas, and the remarkable work of a Catholic priest in transforming a community in Greenfield, California. These stories take us to where Catholic Extension is awakening the missionary spirit among our youth and young adults. When you think about all those moments in history that called for reformation or regeneration of the church or a new way of experiencing uh, the meaning of church, it's so often been driven by youth movements, uh, young adult movements. You know, some of the great heroes of the church, uh, St. Francis, St. Clair, all the great religious orders were really founded by young people. Innovative ministries funded by Catholic Extension are prioritizing young people and feeding their faith so that they might offer the best of themselves and lead the church today and in the future. We are called to do God's work. This is a moment that's very, very important. And I think the Pope is picking up on that and telling young people, you are the future, but your moment is now. All over America, young Catholics today are embracing Pope Francis's call to dream great things, seek vast horizons, aim higher, take on the world, and offer the best of themselves to the building of something better. Young people in a very particular way, uh, when they think about their connectedness to God and their prayerfulness, uh, that prayerfulness can be expressed obviously whenever we gather at the Eucharist. It also happens when young people uh, pull together this experience of their oneness with God and their call to be one with one another and to express God's life and God's love. They live their faith reaching outward into their communities with an energy and faith so great that in a recent exhortation, the Pope joyfully encourages young people to keep running the race before them, recognizing the church truly needs their momentum. There's an energy about it, there's an activity about it that says, let's leap up and make noise, as the Pope says, let's dance in the streets, let's let the joy that is in our hearts be expressed beyond ourselves and do it in this sense of solidarity. There's a way in which you can kind of go off into the distance, to the mountains, to the desert, to experience the mystery of God. But there's another way in which that experience can be really powerfully felt when we come together. Come together uh, for a party, come together for a social occasion, uh, come together for a, a, a mission or a ministry. And you so often see at this young moment of life that desire of people to take what's in them and to express it out in acts of service and care. In California's Coachella Valley, young Catholic women experience transformation in a community characterized by both great wealth and great poverty. Encountering those who labor in the fields, they are beginning to discern a deeper call to service. With support from Catholic Extension, Brenda Noriega and Luz Elias lead a group of young Catholic women from Chicago as they experience a remarkable spiritual transformation in communion with families of the working poor. This valley is very uh, interesting because you have very um, wealthy uh, communities and as well uh, communities that are in financial need. So that reality right there is shocking. I come from an indigenous community. It's called Purepecha. So I work in the fields in the morning, and then after that, I go and volunteer at the church. And from there, I stay to other ministries. We wake up, and we usually have to do breakfast, like something we have to prepare food. And then from there, we go out 
and we start working the fields. Yeah, at times it, get, it gets really hot depending on the type of labor you're doing. If you're doing grapes or if you're doing uh, veggies, it, it depends. So we might work in, in a place for like a week or two weeks and then from there we move to another place and there and there, so on. We spend some time with a very poor community, a community that is in a lot of need, um, but very full of faith, very strong and very focused on where they want to lead their children, and that is to God. So when I saw the woman bring out like the, the clothing, it reminded me so much of like my mother. It represents who we are, and it represents a big part of our, of our culture. Perfect. It's a different reality than what we thought it was. Now that I come here and, and and now that I witness how they live, I feel like I can better represent them. I can give them a voice. Education can be like the, the ticket to the, how to end the cycle of poverty. It's the ticket to success. So they definitely need assistance in education. Volunteering at a church school in Mecca, California, these young Catholics witness the importance of shared faith among the families of the working poor. Being in mission, being here, it makes me realize like what my vocation is, like what I, I would love to do in the future and even now. Praying before an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, they reflect on their call to serve others. Something very, very beautiful that happened to me that did definitely, um, I guess, fortify my faith was that I was uh, spending time with the priest in the parish of Mecca. His name is Padre Francisco. We were in his office and he was asking me, what do you want to study? And I told him, I'm interested in studying theology. And he said, why? And I said, because I love God. And he said, why? Like He was challenging me to um, get in touch with what I really wanted. And I told him because I've been working with the youth and, and I want to continue working with the youth. And I feel like God's given me that gift of, of teaching. And I'm passionate about it. And then I don't even know like why I brought it up, but it kind of just slipped out that I told him that I was interested in entering the religious life. And I had never told anyone that before. These young Catholic women also work to build up the children of the working poor. Together, they grow in faith. Being a missionary is part of the Catholic identity. We are called to be with the people, first of all, to accompany the people, to recognize the realities of, of the people we serve. And that's key for any, any Christian, really, you know, to be open and uh, to others and other realities, um, other communities. And it's been wonderful sharing with these five girls from, from Chicago. Hopefully they will have a transformation and a conversion um, of mind and heart. The people here, even though a lot of them live in poverty, they're really rich in love and in community. It was a wonderful experience spending time with people who had the same interests as us, that have a, such a God-centered life. All the love we receive from, from those communities um, is something I'm never going to forget. One of the things I hope is that we can learn from the diocese we serve of what a young church looks like and then bring it home. And I would love more and more of our, our families that have been supportive of us to really try to engage their own uh, uh, children and grandchildren in the, uh, in the efforts to be aware of what a mission church looks like and what it means when uh, we give the young people uh, leadership opportunities to be part of a young church. For decades, Catholic Extension has supported ministries for young people in rural Montana, and the results are truly humbling to witness. Legendary Lodge is built around a vision of what John Paul called Encuentro Theology, encountering Jesus Christ deeply and personally. And young people come to the Lodge sometimes knowing intellectually about the Lord, but it's a place where they meet Him. And it, it happens magically, wonderfully, uh, year after year. 
the uh, mountain climbing, Eucharist at the top of the mountain, the uh, different water sports that they are able to do there. And this is a you know kind of a, a unique setting. It's Montana at its best. What happens is, is I think um, a joy is kindled and an excitement and a passion um, that spreads actually to their, their parents and to their grandparents and throughout the parish communities and all of a sudden you get a fire in the church community um, that in a lot of ways was enkindled and even, um, you know, began through the evangelization of a young person deciding to follow God. I just see a resurgence of, of this exciting time in Catholicism when young people are, are starting to really decide to follow God and there's a lot of hope in that. That time, college, is vital for the growth in faith because for so many it's the first time they're really truly making their faith their own. We see young hearts are really hungry for relationship with God even if they don't have necessarily the vocabulary to um, explain that uh, but the desires of their hearts are orientated toward God because we're all orientated toward God. As Saint Augustine said, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. So all we're trying to do is make it a safe place for them to explore their faith, to go deeper into their own desires, and then to live their lives intentionally according to what God reveals to them. Let's just open our hearts because the Lord loves us and He has something for each and every one of us. I've taken with me a lot of amazing experiences with the youth around me. I'm taking a a very powerful prayer life that has grown over the course of my years in ministry, and I'm taking a desire to serve. There's a mountain range outside of Helena that looks like a sleeping giant. So Bishop Thomas, at this coffee night, he gestured to us, the college students, and he said, I want to awaken the sleeping giant. And I've always remembered that moment. And, and I know that it lit a spark in my own heart. I think it's awakening a sleeping giant in this church. And there are hundreds and hundreds uh, waiting to be invited to be activated in the life of the church. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our hearts are restless until they rest in Thee, O Lord. Today and tomorrow is what the gospel is about. You know, we're not there just to remember the past, but we're meant to bring to life and bring to flesh and in engagement the mystery of what God is doing in the world. And young people have a special uh, expression of that and it lifts everybody up and I just wish everybody uh, that's been involved in Catholic Extension uh, as an investor in the future uh, an investor in the church sees that what you really are investing in is in the young. Whenever a parent or a grandparent thinks about what's their life for it's always to bring forth life and uh, to see that taking shape and form in the young people that we serve is just a special privilege. In El Paso, Texas, remarkable ministries supported by Catholic Extension have become the here and now of the church, creating opportunities for young people to grow in faith, ability, and community. Funding from Catholic Extension has allowed this dream of an arts and cultural center to become a reality in El Paso. The idea behind the center is how we work with middle school youth to help them develop skills within the culture and within the arts to develop themselves as, as a person, as a Catholic disciple, and then allows them to take that back to their parishes so that they share their skills that they've learned, whether it's within the culinary arts, maybe the digital arts, the visual music, dance, drama, that they can take that back to their parish and share it within ministry. They also serve in an apprenticeship as catechists so that they're learning at the same time as they're teaching. 
for us it was very important to find, a, I guess, like a parenthesis, a space after getting their first communion and before getting their confirmation sacraments, there is usually nothing going on. So when Father uh, Monsignor Bañuelas offered this uh, project to us, um, well, we took it because it was a very good opportunity for our kids. Yeah, developing this relationship with God and this is providing them with something that they wouldn't otherwise they wouldn't have it and so we're very grateful for that they are growing into who they're meant to be right as adults and the hope that they have is that regardless of all the the crazy that's happening out in the world they do have each other we have this little community and when you have that community of family it's it's almost like innate that there is that hope for the future that yes if we can do it here then we can replicate it anywhere else El Paso is directly on the border, and I think it's difficult for people away from El Paso to understand how close we are. Not only is it a reality, but it's practically in your face. And so I think it's important for our kids to, to take that into their, their living of their Catholicism. If I am a Catholic, if I am a missionary disciple, then what does my location, geographical location, call me to? Providing a, a safe and caring and loving environment for them to express themselves and to feel safe enough, you can see that their voice is coming out. You can actually, you, when you speak to them or you listen to them, you can actually see that this is actually coming from the soul. This is actually their, their inner voice. And that's the transformation I've seen. And it's amazing. This is an opportunity that you don't always gonna have. If you let your kids go to something like this, they're going to grow more into their faith. We think that we need to go back to, to our roots, we need to go back to our faith and, and to really strong, you know, to get a stronger family. We live in the desert and I, this, like, this place is like an oasis for, for our community, for our kids. That's what I see. <laughs> I would hope that people feel a, a deeper uh, experience of being American Catholic, that we're concerned about our country, we're concerned about leaving a legacy uh, to what our church and our country is going to look like. Part of that is to try to really create young church and to let young people have this moment to be encouraging of them, to be encouraging of what they're doing, to be constantly looking for ways to, to affirm the people. It's your moment. Uh, you are on. You're the ones that are through this moment of your marriage and family and friendships. You're on now to express to another generation what it means to live out of the Christian vision of life. That it's a powerful vision. It's talking about God's love in the world. That even though all these other forces are trying to diminish or alienate or separate people from one another, we are the people that stand up, and young people especially, stand up and saying, we stand for a God that is bringing us together in solidarity and calling us to do life-giving things in our world. We think this is stronger than all the powers of darkness out there, uh, and all the divisiveness in the world. We stand for something else. It brings us together and it's life-giving. Catholic Extension supports the education and placement of young adult Catholic leadership in mission areas throughout the United States. Both of and for the young, these inspired ministries are having great success, actively engaging the next generation. The Catholic Extension Young Adult Leadership Initiative helps retain, educate, and develop outstanding church leaders. About a month ago, I got hired to be a full-time youth minister at a church about 20 minutes away from where I grew up. And I never thought I could do it, but I'm working while I finish my grad work and help take care of my 10-month-old son. We're gonna do our opening prayer right now. Can you guys give all your papers back to Joan right there? Jo they were awesome. Nathan shared his experiences in the Young Adult Leadership Initiative with an audience of church leaders at Catholic Extension's recent Spirit of St. Francis event. I went to Fordham 
And it was there that I started hearing words and phrases like the margins and like the fringes of society. And it was there that I started hearing about and meeting people that were doing amazing work in places that had been forgotten and with people that had been left behind. And they teach you how to do that work. And they teach you how our faith demands that we do that work. I learned where teens and kids are developmentally and how they're so vulnerable to the things that are approaching them so quickly in this world today and I thought maybe that would be a place to start. That maybe I could show them how loved they are and how worthy and deserving they are of that love and of so much more. Down, you're feeling like you have, you got nothing or your faith is gone or you're not believing, right? You can always sing a song like that and you know, sometimes God comes flooding in like that, right? And for the first time in my life, I go to work excited. Excited to see what God can do through me. To watch that happen among the poorest of the poor in the United States is a huge, huge thing when these young people say we're more than our circumstances. You know, even though we're facing poverty, even though there are issues of gangs and drugs and violence, we're not choosing that. We're going another way and we stand for God's life-giving love and God's promise that love is stronger than all the forces of darkness out there and they're there caring for each other, caring for their communities and we at Catholic Extension especially the people that are in this new season of their life as uh, the, the, the seasoned adult, look on this and say, our greatest gift that we can give is to invest and to encourage this beautiful movement of God that's at work in every generation and it's work now in this young generation. A Catholic priest in California's Central Valley is doing incredible work, bringing a town together to help young adults reach for their dreams as they grow in faith. I've been at this parish for like 40 something years and it's never been this active, this full. There's something going on every night. We must have had like 60 kids in confirmation. Now, I don't even, I can't even count them anymore. The bishop had to come do two masses in one day because there's so many. When I came to this town, I saw the reality, the parents working on the fields with no time to take care of their kids and uh, facing all these challenges of crimes, uh, gang affiliation, drug. Half of the population here are under 18 years old. More than 446 kids did the, co the first communion this past May. That's why I start doing all these activities and programs just to help and support our kids. And I'm working with the school district, the superintendent, the teachers of the schools, the chief of police, and the police department, the city council, and with the mayor. We are working together to face up the challenges, because if the majority of the population here are Catholics, to the Catholic Church, we can help them to have uh, good Christians and good citizens. Just like Father Enrique is a perfect example of a mentor, and I want to do that, I want to come back to my community and be a teacher possibly even be a confirmation teacher as well to help people learn about their faith in God and what it is to be a Catholic. He's definitely brought in a whole new set that's definitely reamped the whole program and it's definitely made it more popular and more exciting for the kids. I think Father Enrique uh, has done a lot for this community because he reaches out to the kids. And by reaching out to them, I think that's what's changing Greenfield right now. I've been talking to my kid, now the high school doesn't look like before, he says. And gang members or whatever, it's going down. It's not as bad as before. When he got here, Greenfield was very tough to live in. It's a funny story that the, one of the rectors and principals at, at UCLA, they saw a big number of teenagers from a little town called Greenfield. And he asked, where is Greenfield? because he saw the energy, the enthusiasm, and the positive energy of this group of kids. 
My hope in 10 years is to see that all the kids and teenagers will be Catholic, people participating fully in the, in the life of the parish. They will be here. And we are doing something now for them, teaching them the Catholic faith. And in that way, we can transform the community. I believe that what you have watched and what you have experienced in these uh, simple stories and these beautiful people is the work of God and God's Spirit in them. And it is transformative. I really believe that this mystery of God happens in the, the smallest hamlets and the most challenging places. But the God life and God's Spirit is in these people. We have seen the living Christ in these inspiring stories and in the mission areas we serve. The young people who are carrying the church into the future are those who work hard, raise families, build parishes, and carry the work of mercy into the community. This hopefulness was beautifully expressed again as the Pope concluded his exhortation to young people. Quote, the church needs your momentum, your intuitions, your faith, end quote. Catholic Extension is proud to support this often pioneering work among the young whom the Pope describes as the now of God. They are making a beautiful difference. They are young. They are life-giving. They're inspiriting. They're making a huge difference in the communities that they are working in and involved in and care deeply for. And it's going to lift the whole human experience forward. One of the best gifts that we have as Catholics is a Catholic imagination. And whether you are Catholic or whether you are friends of the Catholic experience, I think you understand that one of the things that means most to us is that we walk together and we walk in solidarity. One of the great gifts of your participation in Catholic Extension is your understanding that we make a difference in one another's lives. And the things that we do, they really are transformative and they really are impactful. And I really pray that what you have experienced in this episode will give you a greater understanding and a greater experience of the difference you are making by being part of this great movement called Catholic Extension. God bless you all. If you would like to learn more about how Catholic Extension is building up vibrant Catholic faith communities across the United States, please visit us at catholicextension.org.